Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're doing part two on the tissues chapter and we're going to be going over connective tissues today. Now this is a very broad category so we're keeping this as all one part together then there will also be a part three coming up in the tissues chapter. So connective tissues has a few different categories. Now there are some general features here. Um, so they all have to have this ground substance, which is kind of like the extracellular matrix, the fluids that are around these fibers. Um, so there then they also have to have fibers then also cells that make them up. So fibroblasts, chondroblasts, um, osteocytes, osteoblasts, all these different cells, adipose cells, macrophages, dendritic cells. Um, these All these various cell types make up uh, connective tissue and they all work together in a way um, so the different connective tissues that exist the first group are the CT proper or connective tissue proper that's broken up into the loose connect CT proper and the dense connective tissue proper now there are three categories in each of these that we're going to go over so six total total for CT proper and then the other category then is the cartilage uh, so the cartilage has then three categories to it as well, hyaline cartilage, um, elastic cartilage, and also fibrocartilage. And then also bone is considered a connective tissue. And then one that people don't believe, blood. Your blood is also considered a connective tissue. So we'll talk about that briefly as well. All right, starting out here with the types of connective tissue, first focusing on connective tissue proper. The most abundant one is the areolar connective tissue. Uh, so this is, we're starting here for the three in the loose connective tissue category here. So areolar connective tissue, the most abundant one found in the body. This is a loose arrangement of fibers and it's mostly collagen fibers that make this up, um, but are, could also be elastic fibers if you're talking about um, the reticular layer in the dermis. And then you could also have reticular fibers articular fibers. Um, I didn't spell that right, so I'll just erase it. Um, but the captions got it right. Uh, and then, so you have the collagen fibers, reticular fibers, and also elastic or elastic fibers, which are made of elastin. Um, uh, all these are made by fibrocytes and fibroblasts. So areolar connective tissue found uh, in a lot of different places throughout the body. And, you know, some signatures here, you see a loose arrangement. There's no set arrangement of these fibers running through here. So very loose and uneven, and they can hold a lot of water because of that. Uh, next type here are the adipose tissues. So I think adipose is equal to fats. Now in our body, we have both white fats and brown fats. Brown fats are usually in um, our blood vessels and are there to heat up the blood. Uh, the white fats are the ones providing energy. If you're looking at this tissue type here, it's a very loose arrangement again. So this is still loose CT proper. And each circle here, I'll, go, I'll switch to green. Each circle here is an adipocyte. Um, so here the cell type are called uh, adipocytes. Oh, I switched to the wrong one here. So adipocytes, uh, back to the correct color. Uh, here I highlight them in green and, and adipocytes think of them, they're lipids. And these actually look like oil droplets when you're looking at adipose tissue in the slide. So we see these in areas where we need cushioning, uh, fat storage, uh, insulation, and that kind of stuff. Um, so very widely found throughout the body. The last type of loose connective tissue here is the reticular tissue. I mentioned the reticular fibers earlier. And so these reticular fibers are these dark stained fibers seen in this image here. I'm going to switch back to the green again. It's a little easier to see. Um, so this is found in areas like the spleen and lymph nodes. Just to name two main areas. So in these areas here, there are cells that stick. So here, these are macrophages. Uh, I believe this is from uh, the spleen, maybe a lymph node. I'm not sure. I forget Exactly. So, but this Berkshire Community College has an amazing tissue image library if you ever want to check it out. Um, but here, macrophages, B cells, and so forth are sitting on these reticular fibers, and then so they can mount an immune response, break down cellular debris, and so forth, or whether or not it's in the spleen where you're breaking down blood, or in the lymph nodes where you're trying to have that immune response. So these act as a scaffold in a way, but as a, another loose arrangement of these fibers. And now we can move into the dense connective tissues. There are three dense connective tissues we're going to talk about. There's dense regular, there's dense regular, there's dense irregular, and then there's dense elastic. 
Um, so first one here is dense regular, means all these fibers are running in similar directions. Uh, the biggest example here are our tendons. Um, so here's an example of tendons, and you see all these fibers, and these are all collagen fibers. So collagen gives very high tensile strength um, wherever it is, uh, the most abundant protein in the body. Uh, so these are all run in the same direction. So think about the direction in which these resist pulling as well. So resisting this direction is very simple, but if you get hit from the side, easily tear that tendon. Um, so then we bring in irregular connective tissue, similar to regular connective tissue, except these collagen fibers are going all sorts of different directions. So we find this uh, in a lot of different player places of the body where we have ligaments um, covering like joints and stuff like around our glenohumeral joint on our shoulder, there's a layer of this irregular connective tissue and because it's this arrangement, it can resist pulling from multiple directions. Um, whereas a tendon can't resist pulling from that way, it easily tears that direction. And I know it's hard to see in this uh, colorful image here, but this does show uh, these fibers running in different directions here and gives it that strong arrangement of fibers. Um, last type of dense um, connective tissue is dense elastic tissue. Uh, now this is a personal image I got. This is from the aorta. So the aorta, think about it, that's the artery that comes out of your heart. There's a lot of pressure changes in the aorta. Um, so like 120 over 80. So that's the pressure definition of that blood when it comes out of the heart, the high and the low. It goes through those pressure changes through every heartbeat. So these dark fibers in here are actual elastic fibers. And one way to know you're looking at elastic tissue is that usually you can differentially stain these elastin proteins here that make up these elastic tissue. So that's one key giveaway. So we find these elastic fibers um, sorry, my, my dog is asking for my attention right now. Um, but we find these elastic fibers in high abundance in the walls of the aorta and also in walls of organs and tissues that have a lot of stretch to them as well, uh, such as your bladder and whatnot, intestines and so forth. We see uh, these dark fibers appearing. Uh, now we move to the cartilage. So there are three types of cartilage. The first one here is the most abundant type. This is called the hyaline cartilage. So this is found in places like the tip of your nose and the coastal cartilage of your lip, uh, rib cage. Um, key here is no fibers visible. That doesn't say there are no fibers. There are a bunch of fibers in here, but they're just not visible. They're so densely packed that you can't see them. Um, and lots of water is stored within these cartilage as, as well. Um, next type of cartilage, just like dense elastic connective tissue, we have dense, uh, not dense elastic, we have elastic cartilage. Your ears are made of cartilage, but your ears can bend. Um, so here we find these in two main places, ears in the epiglottis. So the epiglottis is that little flap that stops food from going down your trachea when you're eating food. So the food goes down your esophagus and not your trachea because this little flap moves and allows it to happen. Um, so here you can also see this is a, you can see the fibers in this. So another uh, characteristic. So how, when if you're looking at a tissue, how do you know you're looking at cartilage, or how do you know you're looking at CT proper? Uh, cartilage has these unique pockets called lacunae in them. We can see the lacunae down here on the elastic tissue as well. Um, so lacunae um, or lacuna, and these this is where chondro sites sit. So chondrocytes are in there and they're maintaining the cartilage from within. They're mature, whereas chondroblasts are young form of chondrocytes and they're actively producing cartilage. So that could be a collagen, mostly collagen fibers that are being densely packed. So chondro is cartilage forming cells. Uh, don't confuse that with a fibroblast or fibrocyte, um, which is a fiber producing so they just get a different name here, but the key thing you want to look for are these little pockets of lacunae. And the last type of cartilage here is fibrocartilage. This is found in our intervertebral discs, uh, the menisci of our knees, and the pubic symphysis. So three main places where this can be found. If you look at this, there are these collagen fibers that are running in similar directions. So when you first look at this, you think dense regular connective tissue. However, these pockets of lacunae come back. 
So these are little pockets. They're harder to see here, but these are little pockets of lacunae that have chondrocytes sitting in them. And if you think about this, think about force coming from this direction. Think about compressive force. And you think about your meniscus in your knee and the disc in your back, you have a lot of compression in there. So this fibrocartilage is very important for that compression and protection um, of areas where there are lots of compression. Uh, and now we move on to the next type of connective tissue, which is blood. So blood contains no fibers, but it is considered connective tissue because it connects everything throughout our body. Uh, it carries important things in it. So blood is made up of the hematocrits, which is the white, not the white, the red blood cells. and also has the white blood cells, which is known as a buffy coat, and that's less than 1%. So in this image here, uh, the white blood cells are these ones here, uh, and everything else here is the red blood cells. So all the everything else in this image, red blood cells, the ones that stain with the purple pigment usually use a special stain to stain the nuclei on these white blood cells. Now there are different white blood cells that comes up in a different chapter uh, when we talk about the blood. Uh, but here just know that the white blood cells, red blood cells, there are little specks here as well. Those are platelets. Um, and then the fluid around is then called the plasma. In the plasma, we have lots of proteins dissolved, lots of stuff, is, antibodies are dissolved, lots of stuff is moving through the system via the plasma. In the blood, it's about 55% plasma, 45% hematocrit, which is the red blood cells, and then less than 1% white blood cells. And the last connective tissue we're going to talk about today is bone or osseous tissue. Any cell that's in the bone here is an osteo. Or so an osteocyte is a mature bone cell, or an osteoblast is an immature bone cell. Now, within the bone, so it looks like tree trunks almost. Uh, that's because they form these little circular lamella to give it strength. So we have these circular rings that go around the central canal here. We'll talk more about the microscopic bone structure when we get to the bone chapter. Uh, but within this, then, we have these little pockets. These are also called lacunae in here. And here is where you have the osteocytes that are maintaining that bone matrix. And these little dark spider web lines that are connecting these are called canaliculi and are actually allowing these osteocytes to communicate with each, other, with each other. On the outside of this compact, so this is compact bone. Oh, let me change uh, pens here. This is compact bone not spongy bone. Um, so compact bone has these little lamellae rings, has some interstitial lamellae in between these individual tree trunks. So one little tree trunk here is known as an osteon. It's one individual unit of the bone uh, with the central canal in the middle. Um, and then around the outside of the compact bone, you have what's called circumferential lamellae. Um, so again, we'll talk about bone more when we get to that chapter. But here, whenever you see the word osteo, osseous, osteon, start thinking bone. Uh, this is where we start putting all that together. So that's all I have for the connective tissue video. I know it was a short, dirty summary of the connective tissue. Uh, next video, we're gonna be doing another little summary of the rest of the tissues in the body. We're gonna be talking about the nervous tissue. So for your nervous system, muscle tissue, there are three main types of muscle tissue, cardiac, smooth, and skeletal. Then we're gonna talk about uh, tissues can combine to form membranes in the body. Uh, so there are a couple key membranes that we're gonna discuss. And tissues have to also be able to repair themselves. So we're going to talk about the steps involved in tissue repair. All right, that's all I have for this one here. So we talk, went over bone, we went over blood, the, the three different types of cartilage. We have fibrocartilage, elastic cartilage, hyaline cartilage, and then the dense connective tissue proper. We have the elastic connective tissue, the irregular connective tissue, the dense connective tissue, uh, dense regular connective tissue proper, and then the loose connective tissue. We have the reticular connective tissue, the adipose tissue, and the areolar tissue. So lots of great tissues in the body. So we can start, the purpose of these chapters, so we start building these tissues, we form organs. So multiple tissue types together is then what forms an organ. So we can understand structure and function of these organs and organ systems a lot better if we understand the groundwork of the tissue. So the, whether they have an epithelial tissue, a dense regular connective tissue and so forth will help us understand the structure and function of that system. All right, that's all I have for right now. Hope you guys have a great day and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.